morning, boys and girls. Bassists, piccolo players, <laughs> sons and daughters. Uh, this is our 13th session, I believe. And we had just been talking about in the last few sessions about passing chords with four and five part. And it'll work for, you know, uh, three part, two part, you know. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do is I'm going to review uh, quickly uh, the passing chords that we've talked about. The first one we talked about was a diatonic passing where we had, uh, let's say we're in the key of E flat. Okay, so E flat major seventh. So the diatonic passing could be either be the two or the five. In most instances, I end up using the two, the two minor, and the two chord in E flat is F minor. Uh, e flat has three flats: B flat, E flat, and A flat. Uh, so if we built our E flat chord. Uh, let's say our melody note was, I don't know, a D, okay? Uh, and, and block harmony would be a B flat, a G, uh, E flat, and D again, okay? Um, <clears throat> and let's say that we, let's go down this time. I, I have a tendency to want to go up. <laughs> so... Let's say we're going, here's our melody is a, is a C, and say we go B flat, okay? And let's say these are quarter notes. So here we, 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 that would be a good opportunity to use a two passing for uh, the C there. We wouldn't want to use E flat six because none of these voicings would move. We want to keep everybody moving and flowing. Uh, so here's A flat, F, uh, e flat and then C again. So this would be F minor seventh, which is our two, and then down to the to the B flat again. We would just go. I'm sorry. We would just go back to to E flat. Okay, and there's B flat. Okay, and this is back to our E flat or or one chord again. So that's using a two passing or, or diatonic because it's a diatonic chord okay we also talked about um, uh, doing a let's do the diminished down here and let me see so here is our um, let's stay in the key of E flat okay here's E flat well, let's do this let's start with a let's start with a two chord in the key of C, okay? So what's the two chord in the key of C? Is D minor, so we have a D minor, and our melody note is going to be, uh, let's say it's C, which is the seventh, the flat seven, so C, A, F, D, and C, okay? There's our voicing. And we're gonna go down to the B, Okay, so we want to use, now here's an instance, if we use a diatonic passing, we could just do the reverse. We could voice a C, uh, there's our, there's C right there, there's our one chord. So since we're in the key of C, the chord is, is D minor, and keep in mind that chords, um, What's defining the bar is the chord that happens on the strong beat. What what chord is happening? The strongest beat of a bar is beat one, uh, is the downbeat of the bar. The second strongest beat is three. So one and three are your strongest beats. That's why in most instances you find that the chord changes happen on on the downbeat or on three, or if they're anticipated, the end of four or the end of two. But typically it's it's coming around one and three. If you see a chord on two and four, um, unless it's, you know, like three, four, one, bang, and the chord happens there, yeah, that's the chord. But a lot of times if you see a chord on beats one and three, 
there on one and three, and then you see a chord on four or two, those are pretty much functioning as, as passing chords. And later on, I want to get into chords because uh, many times you see wrong chords written. And I don't, it could be published material, and there's still, you'll find a lot of cases where they've written a chord that's probably, it's a diminished chord, but really it's the top end of a five chord, is really what it is. Or you see a minor six chord that's really a two flat five chord. You know, by knowing what's happening before and after, we'll, we'll dictate that, and we can talk about that. Um, so, well, we never got on to, but our other choices for passing, just let me finish this idea up, was our diminished and our half step slide and our, our uh, tritone substitute or dominant approach chord. You can approach a lot of chords with the dominant chord. Uh, let's say you have, you're coming down to, to, to a G and your chord is E minor and here's your chord. There's your E minor chord, and your and and the note coming to it is let's say an A. You could harmonize that with an F7 if you want. Um, you could go A, F, uh, E flat, and C, and this would these everybody moves A down to the G. I mean yeah, F down to the to the E, F uh, E flat down to the D and C down to the, and that works pretty good too. Now a lot of this, keeping in mind that this is probably, you know, whole notes, if this is a half note, and there's probably another whole note up here, you know, that's E minor or something like that. But you can approach chords, try a dominant chord. You know, we're gonna go get into this a little further and we're gonna like work things out in context because that's really how you see things. We'll take like, uh, a, you know, a, a four bar phrase and we'll work it all out and we'll look about, look at how we can solve each problem as we come to the next note. Uh, it's kind of like a crossword puzzle. Uh, a lot of times if you're writing a shout chorus for a big band, you know, you figure out where your lead trumpet is and your lead alto is just so they're kind of jiving either octaves or sixes or there's some sort of sense between the two of them and you can just fill in the blanks pretty much. Uh, and we'll get to that. So until we see each other next time, um, shoot me an email. We'd love to hear from you. Any questions, any comments, any added uh, stuff you want to add to this, shoot me an email. It's fred at fredsticklymusic.com. Fred at fredsticklymusic.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.